Hello, my name is Chloe, welcome to my channel. Today I'm bringing to you the how do you read your book tag. So I was tagged in this by Emily over at Novell Novels um, and it was created by Julie over at The Hungry Bookworm. So I will link both of their videos in the description. I do have quite a lot of notes going into this one just because it is a very discussion heavy video. So I do apologize if I'm looking down at any point for those notes. Um, there are no books to hold up in this. It is completely about how you go about reading a book and how you're forming your opinions as you read. I won't lie, I did find this a very confusing tag um, to get exactly what the creator wanted out of the questions. So I did go back and watch Julie's video and make extra notes on the sort of thing she was giving as an answer to try and make this as fleshed out as she intended. So that is how I've gone about it. Um, I would definitely recommend if my video doesn't give you enough information on um, the questions. If you would like to do this video, I would definitely recommend going back and checking out Julie's because I feel like it's it gives a lot more detail, especially as she is the creator. So the first question, there are only four questions and two of them kind of linked together. The first one being, how do you go into reading a book? So I wasn't exactly sure already what this meant. So Julie, um, gave us more information with do you go in blind? Do you do research? Do you look at reviews? Do you ask your friends? Do you read the blurb? All that sort of stuff. So I think this question really bases itself in how I'm acquiring my books in the first place. So most of the time a book isn't even on my radar unless I've heard a friend or a just fellow person on the online book community talk about the book. I don't necessarily find books for myself at first. Um, for example, my sister's approximately book club pick for September that's just happened was A Court of Thorns and Roses. Everybody knows A Court of Thorns and Roses. Everybody knows of Sarah J Maas. Um, so going into that, I had heard reviews and that is why I wanted to pick that book up. Um, I didn't necessarily seek them out in terms of just before I sat down and read them. I definitely did not read the blurb. I hardly ever read the blurb. I think the time I do that is when I'm sitting in book hauls or TBR videos and explaining to you guys what the book is about. Most of the time I have absolutely no idea. I've heard of it because of fellow people on the internet talk about it or it having a nice cover, things like that. So if I'm in a bookshop, let's say, and I'm not sure if I want a book, I'm looking at the cover, I will read the blurb then because if I haven't heard of it, then I'm gonna look into it. So I, a really good example is I went book shopping with Emily at Novel Novels, who has tagged me in this. Um, and we were in a really, really big charity shop where I ended up buying, I believe six or seven books. Some of those books, I had heard of before so I just grabbed them without even think of it, thinking about it. One of them being um, Is It The Upside Of Falling by Alex Light. I don't know anything about it at all but I know that it's been talked about on booktube um, and I don't necessarily remember hearing good things, bad things, it just has a reputation in my mind and it's something I've heard of. Then there were other books in there um, I wouldn't even be able to tell you the name. Let me try and look at it. So I found an old arc in there called Snakeskins by Tim Major, I believe. And I had, I know nothing about this. I read the first two sentences of the blurb to get a slight idea and decided why not give it a shot. So I tend to go into my books blind. The next question is, do you take a book at its face value? So I did look into a little bit more of what Julie was wanting here. And she gave the definition of face value of taking something at face value as to accept someone or something without considering what they really are, if they really are what they claim to be. Um, so if you look at a book and it looks nice, so let me just put the cover of My Dark Vanessa here. This is the cover that I have of My Dark Vanessa. Looking at this, looking at just the cover, this seems like it could be a slightly hard hitting contemporary story. That is what I would think of it just from that. But because how I choose my books is going through and listening to other booktubers, other like proper reviewers, um, I know that this is a much hard hit, much more hard hitting story. So I'm going to say no, I don't take my books at face value. Um, because I am thinking a bit more about what they're going to be about but that's only because I often hear about the book before I see a cover, before I get a 
description, somebody online has told me something about this book and that's why I'm seeking it out. But then in that same breath, I've just grabbed a book as an example, um, Scythe by Neil Shusterman. I would look at this and immediately think YA dystopian. It is a YA dystopian, but is that because I know that or because the cover looks like it? I'm not sure. But my overall answer to that question is no, I'm not taking them at face value. I do often know a lot more about the book than just the cover is giving me. And if I'm, go if I'm buying a book in a charity shop without knowing anything about it, then I'm reading a little bit of the blurb. And if I've got good internet, I may check Goodreads, but I'm not just grabbing it and thinking that looks like a contemporary, I'm gonna assume it's a contemporary. The next question is, do you read a book as the author intended or go into it deeper and peel it back? So Julie has said with regards to this, do you try and psychoanalyze a book? Do you say what the author should have done instead? Um, no, I don't. I think I do read a book as the author intended, but then I do have a little more to say on that. So the one book I can think where I was forced to peel it back is The Woman in Black by Susan Hill. I read that as part of my GCSE English literature and I absolutely loved peeling that back, but it maybe took me nine months at school to do so. So when I read a book, um, I am not thinking about all the deeper meanings of everything, but I can tell you so much about the cycle of nature and how a parent shouldn't die after a child. Like I can give you so much about the woman in black, but I can't, I, I don't, I wouldn't be able to do that just reading a book. That would take me sitting down with every chapter and breaking apart sentences. And I just wouldn't want to sit and put that much effort in. I'm reading for enjoyment, not for a qualification again. Do I say what an author should have done instead? Um, no, I don't believe I do. So I like to think that when I give a review, uh, when I tell my feelings on the book, if I think there's something that I don't like about the book, I'm not going to say the author should have done this differently. I will just say that I don't like what they've done maybe I'd have preferred it like this but it is the author's work they have written it that way it's not for me to say that they've done something wrong because they haven't <laughs> but if I didn't enjoy it then they didn't enjoy it um I can think of obvious examples of books I really hated I'm not here to slate any authors um but there are some books I hated where I said no that just didn't make sense but I'm not going to say well you should have written this because if I thought that I'd just be an author myself wouldn't I um the second part, of the, like the same question, um, Julie talked about whether I feel entitled to pull a book apart and read between the lines. And yes, I, I do feel entitled. It's not necessarily to say that I do do that. So I think by purchasing a book and by reading the book, um, I'm reading something that that author has put out into the world. If I want to read a sentence and take it as a different sentence for me to enjoy it more, then I am entitled to, but I definitely would never review a book and criticise an author on something that isn't written there. Um, I think that could potentially be a bit of a problem um, when people are reading things and making their own judgments on what it means. Unless it's spelled out for me, I will not ever take something as an author's opinion, but I will like put my own experiences and other books into a book to enjoy it more. I'm not really sure what I'm saying, apart from the fact that yes, I do feel entitled to read between the lines of a book, but I'm never going to criticise an author for opinions they haven't explicitly expressed. And the last question, as a booktuber, reader, reviewer, do you read a book differently knowing you're going to review it? And do you venture into other genres for review? So starting on the other genres, I am never look going into another genre just to review a book. Um, I am what I think a very relaxed booktuber. I am not here to um, get given books for, for review and tell you what I think of them. I'm just reading and letting you all know what I'm reading and what I think of those books. Like it's not coming the other way around, it's just me reading books I wanna read and letting you know what I think of them. So recently I have been branching more into fantasy. That is not for review purposes, that is just, I really felt like it. And I'm loving reading fantasy, but I'm definitely not doing it for the review sake. Um, so there's that. Um, do I read a book differently knowing I'm going to review it? No. So the one thing I have been doing reading differently is with running my own book club um, and doing live shows at the end of the month about the books. I am definitely thinking more about those books as I'm reading them and, I, and I'm making notes. 
but just about parts of the story, things I'm enjoying, things I'm not enjoying, things about the characters. I'm not doing it as a review. I'm doing it as a let's talk about this book in full, not what did I think about each point. It's what happened, um, did you enjoy it sort of thing. I'm not doing it as a let's review each single chapter of this book. Um, without the sisters approximately thing I maybe think a little bit more into it with buddy reads if I'm reading 100 pages a day with somebody that's ambitious if I'm reading 50 pages a day with somebody I will form an opinion on each set of pages much quicker than I would do if I was reading just the whole book by myself but I'm never going into a book and taking away from my enjoyment I read for fun so I'm not going into it trying to pick holes to put in a review I'm just reading it for fun so those are all the questions. I really do hope these made a bit more sense to you. As I said, please go back and check out Julie's video if you would like to answer these questions. Um, I do have a couple people to tag, but they definitely don't have to do this. I have just noticed as I've been filming this video, I've been getting much more sick. Like I have a cold coming and I'm looking at my own face right now and I'm getting very <laughs> ill. So this is gonna be interesting. So I do apologize for that. Um, so I'm going to tag Helen from Helen's Bookhaven and Floor from Crazy Book Lady. Um, I have talked to these people before doing this video and they are open to being tagged. Um, again, you do not have to do this. If this tag is not something that you would like to do, then please feel free to say no, Chloe, I don't want to. Thank you very much. Um, but again, on that note, if you have watched this video and you would like to answer these questions, please do, please put out a video, let me know so I can watch it. If you just feel like sharing your opinions in the comments, please do, I'd like to see those too. I'd love to see some engagement on this. That'd be really, really great. So on that note, thank you very much for watching this video. I really do hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.